You know, when you go on a trip, you usually pack a suitcase full of things to prepare for your journey. Now today, when you travel, it's kind of dangerous, which reminds me of a dangerous journey that Jesus took. So now we're gonna open the suitcase and I'm gonna pull out symbols that will help us tell the story about Jesus' dangerous journey. Jesus was going from Jericho to Jerusalem. He was taking this dangerous journey even though his disciples asked him not to because they knew it would be dangerous. But Jesus, he was determined to tell a story of God's love and forgiveness. On the first day, they came to Jerusalem. It was a Sunday. And it was a wonderful time because people had come from far away to celebrate the Passover, which was a part of the Jewish history when God led the people out of slavery in Egypt. But because Palm Sunday was such an exciting time and the best day of the week for Jesus last week, I'm gonna tell the story in a joyful way. Jesus went off down the Jerusalem road. They found him a donkey. He became his load. Disciples, they said, let's go with him to the capital, the capital, Jerusalem. Well, they walked and they walked uh, to and fro, arrived at the gate, and what do you know? The people were so happy and excited to see them that they threw down their cloaks to say, welcome. Now, some people had some palm branches by their side, but when they saw Jesus, they raised them high. They shouted, Hosanna! and blessed King. Every time you turn around, you'd hear them sing, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed King. So as we look back upon this special day, we remember it as the Palm Sunday Parade. On Monday of the Holy Week, Jesus decided to go to the temple but when he got there, in the courtyards, there were money changers and there were sellers of doves and lambs for sacrifice in the temple. And they were cheating the people that had come from all over for the Passover. And he was furious. How could they do this? And so Jesus cried out, is it not written that my father's house is a house of prayer for all nations, and you, you have made it a den of robbers. And then, with all that righteous indignation and anger, Jesus overturned the tables and the benches of the money changers and the sellers. And when he did, the coins went everywhere. And the people did not like it. And it was dangerous for Jesus. They wanted to get back at Jesus. On Tuesday of the week, Jesus went to the temple. He wanted to worship and to teach. And he began to tell scriptures. And one of the men, one of the Pharisees, tried to trick Jesus and he asked him a question. He said, Jesus, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus said, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord with all of your heart and all of your soul, and all of your mind, and all of your strength. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then 
the Pharisees and the chief priests, they said, by whose authority do you tell these stories? And Jesus basically said, I'll let you be the judge of that. And it became more and more dangerous for Jesus each day. On Wednesday, Jesus went to Bethany where he was staying, but he went to the house of Simon the leper. And all the people were having a meal together. And in the midst of the meal, a woman came and she took a jar a very expensive perfume and she poured it on Jesus' head. And the people that were around her said, how dare you, how dare you? We could have sold that perfume and given the money to the poor. But Jesus defended the woman and he said, leave her alone. She has done a beautiful thing. She has anointed my body in preparation for my burial to come. And what she has done, well, when the gospel is told around the world, she will be remembered for this kind act. But on that same night, Judas, went to the chief priest and he said to them, what will you give to me if I turn Jesus over to you? And they said, 30 pieces of silver, which is 120 denarii or four months wages for a working person. And so Judas went and he watched for a time away from the crowds that he could turn Jesus over to the authorities. The next day was Thursday and it was the beginning of Passover and the disciples had gathered in the upper room and they were enjoying the meal, all the symbolic foods that were shared and the story told about Passover when God led the people out of slavery from Egypt. And during the meal, Jesus took the unleavened bread and he took the bread and he gave thanks for it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. And then Jesus took a cup of wine, and he gave thanks for it. And then he said, this is my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. All of you drink from it. And then he said, I want you to love one another as I have loved you. And they sang a hymn. And that same evening, they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane. And in Gethsemane, one of Jesus' favorite places to pray, in that olive garden, he told his disciples to wait and to watch while he went off to pray. And he told them that he was so full of sorrow. And Jesus fell to the ground in such anguish, and he prayed to God, and he said, Lord, if this cup of suffering can be taken from me, yet not my will, 
but your will. And he went to the disciples, and they had been asleep. And he said, couldn't you watch with me for a while? I am so sorrowful. After this happened three times, there was a commotion in the garden. And Judas and a crowd of guards from the temple and the chief priest and even some of the slaves came out to capture Jesus. And Jesus was willing to go with them. But G Judas, well, he went up to Jesus and he said, Rabbi, and then he kissed him. And oh, how that kiss must have burned Jesus' cheek to be betrayed by one of his beloved. And they took Jesus away to Caiaphas' house. And the chief priest and the Sadducees and Pharisees that were there late in the night condemned him of blasphemy, of saying things that they thought was against God. Things had been so dangerous for Jesus, and now it was at its worst. The next morning was Friday morning, and they had taken them, taken Jesus to Pilate's house. And Pilate met them, and he listened to their stories, and he talked with Jesus, and he could not determine that Jesus had really done anything wrong, especially that would warrant him dying. But the people yelled out, crucify him, crucify him. And in order to please the people and to put down the riot, he condemned Jesus to death. And he sent him out to be whipped by the soldiers. And at that time, the soldiers made fun of Jesus. They not only whipped him, but they spit on him as well. And they beat him, and they even made a crown, ouch, a, a crown of thorns, and they placed it on his head, and they went, Hail Jesus, King of the Jews! It was a horrible time. And then they made Jesus carry the crossbeam of the cross through the streets to Golgotha. And on that hill, they crucified Jesus. They nailed him to a cross, and he hung there in agony. And even though he was dying, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And Jesus died on that cross on Friday. And they took his body and they placed it in a tomb. And they rolled a big rock over the door of the entrance of the cave so that no one could get in. The next day was Saturday. It was a dark time for the followers of Jesus. They were so frightened that they hid in their homes, afraid that they would be captured and possibly killed just like Jesus. The dangerous journey was at an end. But there was hope coming on Easter Sunday. But that is a story for Easter. <laughs>